in InDesign, the first thing that you need to do before you get started is check the preferences. On a Mac, it's under the InDesign menu. On a PC, it's under the Edit menu at the bottom. You want to go Preferences, Units and Increments, and make sure that the horizontal and vertical is set to inches. Once that is done, click OK. In the new dialog box, by going File, New Document, your intent in this class will always be to print. Next, this sets the number of pages, facing pages, start page number, Normally this will be one, but if you're working on multiple documents that is part of the same book, this may be a different number. Page size, you can change it to various things including business card, compact disc, <clears throat> width and height, obvious. If it doesn't say inches here, you need to go back into your preferences and fix that. Orientation, portrait or landscape. Number of columns, we will not use this in this class. Margins. This controls your live area where text and logos or things like that will go. Normally it is set to 0.5. Bleed should always be set to 0.125 and hit tab. It will auto populate the rest. Slug we don't worry about in this class. Click OK and you have a new document. Note, this line here is your bleed. This is actually off of the page. So the tools, we have a select tool, a direct select tool, the text tool, we have a line tool. <clears throat> We're going to skip down to the rectangle frame tools. Inside those rectangle frame tools, there are other tools as well. Um, you have the ellipse and the polygon. And then you have regular rectangle tools, ellipse and polygon. Now, the difference between these is the rectangle frame tool allows you to put images inside. This one does not. Okay, then we move on down. We've got gradient, we've got the hand, we got the zoom various things that should be easily recognizable. Alright, so let's talk about creating a document. I'm going to create a pseudo newsletter using text and images that I already have. <clears throat> so the first thing I'm going to do is I know that I want a color in here I click on the swatches panel. It's just like the swatches panel in Illustrator. I can, the only difference, and this is the cool part, you can click on this drop down menu. I call it the hamburger or a super hot dog, whatever you want to call that, and go down to um, new color swatch, color mode. You can click and drop down here to Pantone solid coated. And for this example, I'm going to use 151, which is the dreaded orange that I hate. Okay, with that set, notice that it set it to the stroke. I don't want that. I want my stroke to be none. And I want my fill, which is this top one, to be my Pantone 151. Okay? So again, this is my fill this is my stroke and this is where I control the stroke thickness so I'm gonna grab and I'm gonna draw from my bleed inside to create a nice little border notice that I have the bleed all the way around I've got my live area now I'm gonna insert a text box for my headline and for my headline I could type this is a headline or whatever. I select it. Up here is where I change my information. I use impact for sometimes for my heads. Here's your sizes. Now you can also hold 
Shift Command on Mac or Shift Option on PC and the greater than and less than signs to make this bigger and smaller. All right, now with that in place, let me go up here and set my screen mode to match yours. So you'll see this. You'll see these blue outlines around everything. If you want to preview, you hold the Shift key down and hit W. And this will preview your page and show you what it looks like. Okay. Now I noted when I did that, that that was a little off center. So I'm going to go in here and we'll select all command A or option A on the PC. And I'm going to get it back to normal. All right. Then I'm going to take my text tool. I'm going to draw another box. And I'm going to go up under File, Place, and I'm going to find my text. In this case, it's Newsletter Cover Copy. And I'm going to open it, and it will place the text in here. Now, this came in with tabs already. If you hold Shift Option T or Shift Command T, it will pull up the tab menu. You can see this little tab here is pulled in. If it wasn't, you just grab the top, pull it in, 0.25. Make sure you've selected all the text first. Okay. So we have our text. For this layout, I want to do a two column. So again, I click on this. I look up here. Here's my columns. I increase it to two. I want a little bit more of a gutter in there. So I do that. All right, now I've got my headline. I've got my body text. Now I want to add a photo, and I want to add it here. So I draw my box. You can see the X through it, but you notice that it's kind of over the text. Up under Window, Text Wrap. The Text Wrap dialog will pop up, and this second one, causes the text to wrap around. Okay. If you want all the settings the same, you click this link. I always have the link unclicked so I can control each way because I don't want it to go up because it's going to interfere with my headline. So I need space on the left side and I need space on the bottom. always try to line up your lines here. If they won't, just get them as close as you can for now. There's tricks to the rest later on. Now with this same dialog or with this same um, image box selected, I go file place or command D or option D on the PC. And I go in here and I'm going to load Nick's page. picture. Now, it's awful big. I don't want it that big, so I'm going to click on my direct select tool, and I'm going to click. Notice I get the brown rectangle. Holding the shift key down, I can now size it down. By going into the middle, it turns to a hand. I can bring it back, and I can size this photo to the size that I want. And get it how I want it. Always using rule of thirds to see if I can get a good, better photo. Click on it, Shift W, and there is my file.